All right, so now I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step keyword research process to find keyword opportunities for your website and industry. So the first thing you wanna do is come over to the SEO tools and then under keyword research, click on the keyword magic tool. Then here, we're gonna have to enter a seed keyword. This is gonna be the starting point for SEMrush to find more keyword ideas and opportunities for your industry. So for example, let's say we are in the AI tool niche and maybe we've created a website with AI tools or we are a blog writing about AI tools. The first thing uh, as a seed keyword I would enter here is just AI tools and then click on search. And now we can see that SEMrush gives us a lot of different keyword ideas related to AI tools. But before we go through each of these ideas, I wanna first go through each of the different metrics that SEMrush shows us for each of these keywords because it's really important that you understand what everything means so that you can make good decisions about what keywords are actually a good opportunity and what you should not go for. So the first column shows you the intent of the keyword. This is one of the most important things you wanna think about when deciding what keyword to target and also how to create your content to make sure you rank for that keyword. So intent just basically means what is the person who typed that phrase into the search bar actually looking for? What is the goal of that person? And SEMrush basically gives you four different uh, intent categories. There is commercial, there is informational, there's navigational, and then we also have transactional. And here we can see an overview of all of these different intent categories. So the first category is navigational. So for example, if somebody just types in Subaru website, then this person just wants to go to the specific website, which is Subaru. Then we have informational, when somebody types in what is a good car, then the person is not really ready to buy a car yet. The person just wants to find some information about how to make the decision what car to buy. Then we have commercial investigation, when people compare different providers or services like Subaru versus Nissan, this person is not quite yet ready to buy a car, it's still trying to um, compare different brands to finally make the decision which brand to go for. And then we have transactional, when somebody types in buy Subaru Forester, this is really specific and the buy definitely shows us that this person is ready to actually buy the car. So this person is the furthest along in the funnel to becoming a customer. Now it doesn't make sense for us to go for navigational keywords if we aren't really the Subaru website. So what we want to be focusing on is mainly on informational, commercial and transactional. The most valuable keyword in terms of each click is definitely the transactional one because people who type in these keywords are further along and it's a lot easier for, for us to convert them into a client or a customer compared to let's say informational intent keywords because those people are just, just looking for information and aren't ready to buy something yet. So looking at the keyword intent will give you a good idea about how likely it is for the traffic to convert into customers or clients compared to other keywords. So the conversion rate for the transactional keywords is a lot higher compared to the conversion rate of the commercial keywords. And then the conversion rate here is a lot higher than the conversion rate of informational keywords. So this is also how I would prioritize targeting different types of keywords also taking into account how much traffic volume there is for those keywords. And the volume we can see in the third column, this shows us the average monthly searches over a 12 month period for our keyword. So on average, about 15,000 people type in AI tools into the search bar per month. So obviously the higher volume, the better, because if more people search for something, potentially the more traffic you can get. But usually the higher the volume, the uh, difficulty to rank for that keyword is also higher. Then in the next column, we have trend, which shows us the trend of the searches over a 12 months period. So for AI tools, we can see that the trend is going up, which is a good sign if you want to target that keyword. It just shows us that the interest in AI tools is actually going up over time. 
Then sometimes you also have these spikes here. So for example, for Dragon AI tool, we can see that there was a big spike a few months ago, but now the searches are really low. So just, uh, you wanna keep that in mind. So don't expect to just get 1,900 in traffic volume for that keyword every single month, because there was just a big spike which increased this number, um, but maybe now it only gets like 100 or even less searches per month. And then you probably don't wanna target this keyword uh, if you compare it to other ones who have a more stable trend. In general, I would recommend to just go for more stable keywords, like for example, AI writing tools. Here you can see there's a consistent demand for this keyword and it's a lot easier to predict if it's gonna be worth it to target uh, this keyword instead of just uh, looking at these spikes, which are really unpredictable. Then we have keyword difficulty, which is also one of the most important metrics you wanna take into account when deciding what keywords to target. The higher the number, the more difficult it will be to rank for that keyword. So in the next step, we're gonna be filtering out all of these difficult ones, so we only see the keywords that we actually have a chance for ranking with a new website. Obviously, if you have a, a website that has a higher authority, then you can also go for keywords that are a bit more difficult to rank for. But in the beginning, if you have a new website, it makes no sense to try and go for keywords that are difficult or even very hard to rank for, just because it's gonna be uh, virtually impossible for you to rank for them, so you will not get any traffic, even though the volume of this keyword is quite high. And then we have CPC, which stands for cost per click. This will give you an idea about what advertisers are willing to pay per click to show their website to people who type in that keyword. So you probably know that when you type in something on Google, let's say AI tools, then there's always these sponsored posts that are at the top and also sometimes in the middle. And for example, SEMrush, because it says sponsored, are paying to appear here at the top of the search results. And if I would click on here, they would probably pay around $2.20 uh, for uh, just getting the click onto their website. Usually that also shows you how valuable that keyword is. So for the keywords that are more likely to convert into customers, those keywords usually have a higher CPC, which means advertisers are willing to pay more to appear for those keywords. And then we have competitive density. This gives you an idea about how many advertisers are trying to show their website for this keyword. And the higher the number here, the more advertisers there are, so the higher the competition. And then under SERP features, we can see about how many SERP features there are for this keyword. So for example, for AI tools, we are not only seeing these regular um, website results in the search, we also see things like people also ask, or when we scroll further down, we can see related searches. Sometimes you also have videos from YouTube or like shopping things on the right side. And these are called SERP features. And in general, the more SERP features you have here, the less real estate there is on the page for your regular website that you wanna rank. So that makes it a bit harder to rank on the first page or higher on Google because there are all these SERP features in between. But I wouldn't worry about this too much, to be honest. Then we have the number of results shown for that keyword. And at the end, we can see when the last time was that SEMrush updated these metrics. All right, so now that we understand what all of these metrics mean, let's go ahead and find some keyword opportunities. Now, the first thing I would do is set some filters because uh, right now we have a lot of keywords that are very hard to rank for. We can see that here under KD. Like I said before, for a new website with a low authority, it's gonna be almost impossible to rank for these keywords. So what I would do is just go to the filters up here and then under KD, I would start with the very easy keywords. So from zero to 14% for the KD, just click here, and then it will filter out everything that is not very easy. So now let's go through these keywords. The first one is why is auto blogging AI the best AI writing tool? This is kind of a weird keyword because it's just focused on auto blogging AI. This looks like a campaign they have done, and you can also see that here in the, in the trend, this traffic spike here. 
So I, I would say it doesn't make sense to, to target this keyword because one, there's the spike and now there's probably very little traffic, if anything at all. And also it doesn't make sense based on the intent because unless you own the website autoblogging AI. So I would not put this on my list. Then we have Kiwi AI tool. Here we can see in the trend that this was very popular for a time and then now the trend kind of died down. So I would probably also not uh, target this keyword. So let's move on to the next one. We have Oxolo AI video generator tool, also the spike. So I'm just trying to avoid anything that has like this spike and now it's probably dead. So let's move on to maybe this one, AI remove close tool. So this definitely looks interesting. Okay. because an AI remove close tool is probably something that is pretty new. And we can also see that here, the demand for that keyword has just increased in the last few months. And if this actually does work, then it's probably something that people will continue to look for also in the future. So if you would have like a website that actually offers this kind of tool or a website or a blog that talks about different AI tools, then it might make sense to actually target this keyword and like let's say make a list of different AI remove closed tools um, and, and be early here in the trend for, for this keyword. So I would definitely put this on my list. Um, so what I would do is just click on the plus icon here and then we're gonna create a new list. I'm just gonna name this AI tools and then click here. And now this keyword is on the AI tools list. Then the next one is AI illusion tool. This also could be interesting. We have a KD of one, so it should be absolutely no problem to rank this very high on Google. We have a pretty uh, consistent traffic volume and we have a traffic volume of 110 average searches per month. So it's probably gonna be difficult for you to decide on what traffic volume is gonna be worth it for you to target the keyword. This really depends on a few factors. First, if you have a new website, then you probably have to go for low volume keywords, like low volume long-term keywords, because the other ones are just gonna be too difficult for you to target. And you wanna build up some traffic just using, just going for a low competition keywords to build up your authority. And then slowly over time, you can also go for keywords that have higher volume and that have also higher keyword difficulty. And it also depends on your industry. So for some industries, each customer or each client is gonna be worth a lot. So even if you just get, let's say 50 clicks on your website per day, but then one of these uh, clicks converts into a customer, you maybe already make like a thousand or two thousand dollars from that customer. So it's already gonna be worth it for you to still target low volume keywords. So as long as you do get some clicks and you think it's worth it for you in terms of how likely this viewer or this visitor will be to convert into a customer, then it definitely makes sense to, uh, to target that keyword if the intent is there, if the intent will most likely lead to a conversion. So I would just also put this one on my list. So we just wanna continue to go through these keywords and add all the ones that we think it might be worth ranking for. At some point you probably wanna stop because the volume is just getting, uh, getting lower here, the lower we go, because it's sorted by traffic volume. And if you have a hard time finding keywords that have a decent volume in the very easy keyword difficulty category, then you can just change this from very easy to easy and then just go up to find keywords with a higher traffic volume. And something you can do to find even more different types of keywords is to change up the seed keyword here at the top. So something I would do is just go to Google and then type in the general category or my first seed keyword, then scroll down and look for related searches right here. So here you can see Google gives us uh, different types of things people are typing into the search bar that is related to our topic. So for example, AI tools for writing or AI tools for students. Let's maybe, for example, use this one. So let's go back here, then type in AI tools for students and then click on search. And this will give us a completely new list. Then we can also uh, clear this filter here so we can see the entire list uh, that is specific for AI tools for students. So this was the first of two keyword research methods I'm gonna show you. So in the first one, we just used the keyword magic tool. And now in the second one, we're gonna use our competitors to find keyword opportunities. And we're gonna use the keyword gap tool under the competitive research uh, tab. So let's click on keyword gap. And then here we wanna type in our own website's domain. So as an example, I'm just gonna use the SEMrush website. So SEMrush.com. 
and then we want to add some competitors. So here, uh, Samraj already gives us some options for our competitors. So I can just choose them here based on this list. If you want to get a larger list of competitors for your specific website, what you can do is go to the organic research tab, open this up in a new tab, and then you just want to type in your domain here. So again, I'm just going to type in Samrush, click on search, and then we just want to go to competitors right here. And here, when we scroll down, we can find a list of our top competitors. And that's based on the amount of similar keywords that both our website and the competitor websites are ranking for. So let's go back to the keyword gap tool and then just enter some competitors from the list that Samras provides us with. So hrefs, uh, let's maybe add this one as well. And then also this one and then click on compare. And then here we want to scroll down to the keyword list. And now this is going to show us keywords that us and our competitors are both ranking for. So for example, Google Search Console, we, or in this case, SEMrush is ranked number five for this term. And then SimilarWeb ranked number 79, 19, eight, and 32. So what we want to do is find keywords that all of our competitors are ranking for, but we are not ranking for. And we can simply filter those keywords by clicking on missing, the missing filter here. And now we can see, for example, Amazon Affiliate Program, uh, all of our competitors are ranked for this keyword and this actually has a high volume, but we aren't even ranked. So it might be a good idea for us to target this keyword because all of our competitors are ranking for it, which, may, which makes the chances of us ranking for it a lot higher as well. But obviously we wanna make sure that these keywords make sense in terms of our uh, SEO strategy. So maybe something that would make more sense is something like how to find keywords on a website and then here again, you can see, for example, hrefs is ranked number two, but we are we don't have any rank. So, so SEMrush probably doesn't have even any content around this keyword. And because this phrase is actually quite relevant for an SEO tool like SEMrush, I would say it definitely makes sense to think about creating content around this keyword. So we can also rank just like our competitors and potentially get some more traffic and also new customers.